Howdy friends, Wayne with Cadence Hope Foundation. With us today are Michelle and Dustin. They live about, oh, an hour or so outside of San Antonio, and they have a son in the neonatal intensive care unit right now. Now, they've also got three other kids at home. So, Michelle, Dustin, how are you today? Blessed, happy, thankful. Yes. How, how's, how's it going with having three kids at home and one in the hospital? How's that? Um, it's incredibly hard, um, especially from the emotional standpoint on my end of feeling like I'm having to choose time between both worlds that need, they both need me. And so we've worked on trying to create a schedule where not oftentimes are we together, but we're trying to divide and conquer. Um, but we have an incredible village of people that are working on helping us and trying to give us a little bit of grace so that we can be present as best we can with each of our worlds until they can be all together again. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize how many people it takes to support a family that has a baby in the neonatal intensive care unit. Uh, I mean, I don't know your situation personally, but you know, it's grandparents stepping up who coming to live at the house while, while you're in out of town, you two going, one being in at home and one being at the hospital when you can't be there at the same time. There's a, a lot of issues that people just don't think about. And I always say that in the, in the neonatal, neonatal world, you either get it or you don't get it. And it sounds to me like you get it. One of the things I wanted to talk about today, um, Cadence Hope over the past 10 years has advocated for the parents advocating for the baby uh, many, many times. Uh, Cadence's grandmother, Terry, uh, has been on Cadence Hope quite a lot over the past several years. And she's also always tried to drill home the fact that you need to speak up. If you don't understand, if you don't think the doctor or the nurses are doing the right thing, whether you're right or wrong or they're right or wrong, you need to say something about it. And I saw an email that you all posted. And uh, tell me a little bit about why you posted this email advocating for, uh, uh, for the parents. <laughs> um, so, so COVID has made a lot of changes. And from what we understood, sure. um, there was a lot of, of good in the NICU world provided to parents and things like that prior to COVID. And then a lot of things stopped. And the biggest thing was that parents were only allowed one parent in to visit at a time. And um, we are a team. Our, our, since we started dating, we became a team. And then through th th three kids, now four, um, we're always there to advocate for each other and to be present when one person can listen the other person is also there to listen to help pick up any things that were missed. And then um, it, sometimes it's hard for one person, especially a mother in this world, to speak up about things because we're so emotionally invested and we're scared and we're nervous and our emotions override a lot of um, clear oh, yeah. thoughts. Sure. So um, he started to notice that and how it was emotionally breaking me to have to be there alone and then to have to share time instead of being present together. So... I'll let him take over from there. So um, same thing, COVID. The initial thing was the process of entering into the hospital. So as any uh, NICU mom knows, you're pumping every three hours. In the beginning, we're delivering that milk immediately to the hospital because um, there's not a store. We don't have a, a stash, you know, right. built up. So we're coming in and out constantly and because of COVID. We're having to check in every time and wait in line. It's just, it seems kind of silly to me. And so I uh, requested a meeting with an administrator and God bless her, a wonderful person. She listened. She said, yes, come talk to me. And I think a highlight of that for any other parent in the same situation is not to start off complaining, but offering a solution. I, I, I think you did. I, I, from from what I read to you. Yeah, yeah. From what I read, you looked like you did this the right way. <laughs> uh, it's just, treating people how you'd want to be treated. If, sure. if I had a company and someone saw a problem, I don't want you to come and complain. I want you to come and say, hey, I, I think you could improve this way. That's awesome. So big props to this, this woman as an administrator saying, yes, come talk to me. And we talked about, we brainstormed, and I mentioned the idea of maybe a different color badge for NICU parents or whatever. And she said, I, I think we can work on that. That makes sense. And she said, anything else? I was like, well, if you're being generous <laughs> with, with uh, your time, 
That's yes. I said the idea of I can be present with my baby. She can be present with our baby, but we can't be there together. And I explained, you know, that we're a team, the same type of thing. And I said, I cannot see the logic in that. I don't see it posing an additional risk. Uh, we're screened when we come in the front door. We're screened again before we go in the NICU. We're also very aware, as any parent in the NICU is, we're going to wash hands extra. We're going to do the mask extra, even if we were potentially lax before. It's a big deal. This is an at-risk human that we're trying to care for. And I said, can we work on that? And she's like, well, you know, let, let me talk to my boss. And then we talked about it. And so I sent a follow-up email and I think the next day, Michelle kind of hit a breaking point emotionally. And it was like, I got to be there for his first bath, but she did not. She got to do the first something else. The first time I held my son, my husband didn't get be to there. be next to me. And it's yeah. such a family, beautiful sure. moment. And it I actually began to divide. For me, I was happy to emotionally separate myself from my husband and um because it was I was break I was breaking I am um, <laughs> it was really hard for me I was having sure. separation from my children at home and then I was only allowed to be there we were staying in a hotel at the time trying to be close enough for all of these regular moments and he was having to drive me and drop me off and it was the nurses and doctors were throwing all this information at me and I was tired and emotionally broken. And so he watched me have a meltdown. <laughs> I was really sleepy, but after I saw that meltdown, I decided to stay up and write a second email because we had the meeting, first follow-up email. And I started off with my wife loves more passionately or fiercely than anyone I've ever met. But today she broke. And um, I went into some numbers within the, what the city of San Antonio provided population, number of active cases, and it did the math and it's a 0.00288% chance that any individual was walking into the hospital with COVID and then we're screened and then we're screened again, plus we have masks, plus we wash our hands and the percentage of a woman having emotional issues by being separated from her partner is near 100%. Right, so right. everything in medicine is risk versus benefit. So you speak up, you ask questions. I have to ask this question. So I've ended the email with saying, if you're not going to change it, that's fine. But please give me a solid why. I want to understand why we're having a separation so I can accept it. And again, God bless this woman is such a wonderful leader. She listened, she made an effort. And I think two days later, I'm at the hotel because we're separate. She says, get an Uber over here now. <laughs> and I did. We cried together. We got to share a moment together with our son, first time since he was born. And that was awesome. And ever since then, smiles. We saw other parents smiling. We, we were able to kind of talk in the hallway. The staff here, not just the nurses, but every bit of the staff that we happen to ask, we're like, oh, we love this change. It's so good. So good for the parents, for the babies, for the happiness in general. And we're like, this is great. We should share this. Maybe other people are having a similar issue. And that's the post that you saw. But when I read your email, it's like, this says it just the right way. And that's why as soon as I, as soon as I got done reading, I sent you the message to see if we could record this. Um, how are the kids at home handling? This? <laughs> that was a part of my breaking point. Um, <laughs> so my um, my 18 month old, she just misses daddy immensely. Sure. sure. Um, and then my five year old, she grew up like overnight, which was hard to see. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Um, my three year old, she is this. Well, she's like me, big love and um, very chatty and super passionate in every direction. So she will, we say, emote big. She's either loving beyond or she is crying on the floor. <laughs> so um, she started to shut down. And um, that was our breaking point. Of now we have to communicate, figure out how to be in both places. She hadn't been with her parents for 
a week, probably. Oh, like nine or ten days. I have a beautiful village, parents, grandparents, sisters. And so she was getting her. more, but, but when you when your parents are not present, right. and there's a constant change, I think it's really hard. And, and then from what I understand, the NICU used to provide an opportunity for the the, the siblings to learn what's happening with their with their brother, um, but because of COVID, none of that's available. So now we were trying to find a way to help as best. I mean, as best we can, we're trying to teach them what's happening and why. I've had the question. My my three year old asked me walking from school, and she said, "I said I have to go, you know, take care of Stokes today." And she said, "But." But mommy, why can't you say that? I said, well, Stokes needs mommy and daddy to help him too. And she said, well, why can't the doctors just be like a mommy or a daddy? So I had to explain to her that doctors are great, but they don't love and cuddle like a mommy and daddy can because they have to take care of so many other people. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard for that three-year-old's mind to kind of figure out what's happening. Well, it's a hard concept for anybody to to, to learn is that, um, and we have a, one of our supporters is a, is a NICU nurse and she's been a NICU nurse for 30 years. And the first thing she ever told me is we love those babies, but we can't love Thank them you. as much as a parent. Thank you. Yeah. We it's, just told, so our, we've been very blessed in the NICU. Our son, he, while he is very small, um, he is progressing beautifully. So good. we haven't had any major setbacks, which I think would cause a lot of extra stress and issues. Sure. And so, sure. We talked about, you know, the, the, the good that we can create on this journey. We're able to mentally handle a little bit more than I think an average NICU parent would be able to handle. And so that's why we shared those emails. It's like it, not everyone can as eloquently sit and write down an email like he was able to take the time for. And so we'll make it easy. Let's, how can we advocate now and get, we've been poured over with prayer and goodness and, and, and beautiful things and help. And so how can we do good and share to all of these other families and advocate, help them advocate for themselves? Cause sometimes it's, if you can have a template, it's just, it's easier to advocate. And if so, yeah. every NICU parent writes the letter and sends it in, maybe that will be the tipping point for that hospital to be able to have a team. In closing, is there anything else, anything else you want to add to, to, to some good news or, or, or just information to help other, other families? Good news is our boy is doing great. We, Wonderful. like Michelle said, because we have that blessing, we're able to open up and spend time praying for other people and trying to send, share other things um, to share with other families. I mean, for one, if there's any administrators that are watching this, what a beautiful sign of strong leadership to say, I will listen to you and I will advocate for you. And one of the points we heard from multiple nurses is that they said, we've mentioned this before and they hear it and they nod along. But when they heard it from a parent, it had more gravity. And I wouldn't have thought that. I would have thought that they would have respected the employees that are directly touching and talking to to the, to the uh, parents as much. But to hear that was even a further push, like we need to share this with other parents. Because if you're an exhausted, going through a lot of hard times with your baby and you're just like, hey nurse, can you maybe say this? That's probably as much energy as you have. Uh, and on the journey, um, one of the biggest things that I'm having to overcome with my own is I'm, I'm afraid to offend people or to upset people or to annoy them with the question but if you need something or if you feel something or if you think something ask because the worst thing that they can do is either say no or oh we can't do that or basically turn you down but if they don't then you can gain so much more there was a lot of things that I'm learning but it's also because I'm asking and I feel like sometimes the nurses the team the people here they're so busy keeping babies alive and doing so many things that they forget to tell you some of the benefits that you should be receiving. And um, if you don't understand how the machines work that's hooked up to your baby, ask, because then 
you can watch and you can catch something maybe before a nurse, which is so mm -hmm. important in this world. Um, and then the last thing is that accept the help. People warned me. I got these emails saying everyone, these people want to help us. These people want to do good for you. Um, it's really hard to humble yourself and say that you need help because we're strong and we're mothers and, and fathers and we can take care of ourselves. We can take care of our kid, but they, they kept on telling me people want to help you. Yes, they do. They do. They want, it feels good to help mm -hmm. and it feels good to receive the help. So humble yourself and, and say, sometimes it's saying, I don't know how I need help, but I would love help or having someone else help advocate in that world for you saying all these people want to help. And I don't know how to, how to bring them in. Cause I'm so busy with my baby. Can you please take care of that for me? And so they, they've done, we've had people do that for us and it is really hard to accept it. But then it feels good but all the way around. You just feel so blessed you want to go and pay it forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to close this out without mentioning that if you see a problem and you want to speak up, make sure you're doing it in such a way that it's respectful and well-received because it's easy to, to stand on the soapbox and say, this is wrong. Okay, what's that going to do? So to take the time to say, thank you so much for everything you're doing, administrator. I noticed this and I was thinking this other thing might work. It's a very soft intro to maybe we can help each other. And I think I even used the word, can we be a team and work on this? And I mean, how can, I think it's kind of hard to say no to that, even if you're like a <laughs> stick in the mud type of person. So uh, make it easy for them to say yes. Well, Michelle and Dustin, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. We wish you and, and your whole family, but especially your son, would say a prayer for him to make sure he continues to grow and, and prospers, and, and one of these days y'all get to go home and all be together as a family. I, I would stress it's 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 wonderful to what Dustin just ended with it. You you need to advocate advocate for your child, but you need to do it in a polite, caring way. If you just start screaming, they're not going to pay any attention to you. Um, and hopefully, um, this will help other families. So thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.